Howdy y'all, I'm Mr. B and you're watching my tip talk on topic 3.1, Empires Expand. We're in a whole new era now. We're out of the era of states establishing and maintaining power, and now we're going to see states expand and centralize their power. So that means we have a brand new essential question for this unit, for unit three. How did land-based empires shape politics, economics, and culture in the period 1450 to 1750? So let's get some knowledge nuggets for some free response brain vomit. So during this time period, land-based empires used various methods to expand territory and increase influence and power, but you're going to hear me say military conquest quite a bit. Um, these empires include the Manchu, the Mughal, the Ottoman, and the Safavids. Um, and because they ruled over such large areas and they had a lot of times multi-ethnic populations and they had control of overland trade routes, they had to have some innovative administration that we're going to be exploring in this unit, uh, unit three. So they were centers of artistic and intellectual achievement also, but we're going to talk about that later. So this first topic, 3.1, is really about how empires expand and establish control. But they do this in the face of rivalries. That's really what we want to talk about here. Gunpowder made states even more powerful than they were, um, and this new technology allowed them to conquer and control territory more effectively and led to some changes in military tactics and strategies. Uh, so these political and religious disputes they would have sometimes would result in a lot of more heavy duty conflict involving gunpowder. So that's what we will be seeing. And remember my website, it has quick access to all this info and a lot more. So make sure you hit that if you need it. Okay, so the Ottoman Empire. This was one of the most powerful empires during this period, and it reached its peak under Suleiman the Magnificent in the 1500s, but it didn't decline until the 1900s. Um, they were known for their military skill, especially the use of gunpowder weapons, which is how they brought down the Byzantine Empire at Constantinople in 1453 with a cannon that could launch 1,200-pound uh, cannonballs. They also had controlled important trade routes that connected Europe, Asia, and Africa, and they were really skilled traders that facilitated the exchange of goods between those places, which made them very wealthy and very important in world trade. But they had a challenge. The Safavid Empire was founded by Shah Ismail I in 1501, uh, where modern-day Iran is, it was Persia, and it's known for Shia Islam. They're, they were rivals, the Safavids were rivals with the Sunni Ottoman Empire to the west, and they had a lot of conflicts with them, but it wasn't always religious because the Safavid were sandwiched there. They couldn't expand, and that causes conflicts, kind of like if you have a sibling and you're sitting in the back seat and like you draw the little line, and you're like, this is my mom, he's putting his hand across. Yeah, that was kind of what was happening, but the tough thing for them was because they had the Mughals to the east. So the Mughal Empire was founded by Babur in 1526 when he wanted the Battle of Panipat, which ended the Delhi Sultanate and started the Mughals. They ruled over much of northern India until their decline in the 1700s, and they were Sunni. So Sunni, Shia, Sunni. Uh, but of course, the Mughals ruled over predominantly Hindu population. They're, they're, we know them for their cultural achievements like architecture, literature, art, and we'll see that again in some later topics. Um, so then let's go next to the next land empire, which is to the north in China. The Qing Dynasty was established by Manchu invaders who conquered China in 1644, and they were successful in expanding their territory through military conquests and diplomacy, and they ruled over China until they fell in 1912. Um, and they're the ones that we see deal with the incursion of European powers in the next era with the age of European imperialism. Um, but that's them. And then let's also talk about Russia real quick. Ivan III is the dude who helped escort the Mongols to the exits. And then later on, Ivan IV, or the Terrible, as you might remember him, pushed the Mongols on out the door and used peasant warriors called Cossacks to expand to the east. Military conquest. So state rivalries were a major role in the expansion and decline of these. For example, the Ottomans and Safavids were rivals in part due to the religious differences, Sunni versus Shia. And they also had conflict over territory and control of resources. Uh, similarly, the Mughals faced challenges from some of their neighboring states like the Marathas and the Sikhs. These state rivalries weakened the Mughals and contributed to the decline. So obviously trade is still important here. There's a lot of money to be made and wealth is power. So remember, uh, when in doubt, if you have a free response question that deals with this, you can almost always bring up trade or technology, and this unit has both. The Ottomans controlled access to trade between Europe and the rest of the world. The Safavid Empire controlled important trade routes that connected Persia with India and with Europe. Uh, the Mughals controlled much of the trade that occurred with, with and within India. Uh, the Qing Dynasty was a major trade, a global trade player, uh, because they have the spices and the teas and the things that and the silk and the teas that people like. So just keep in mind that trade is a major driver of empires expanding or trying to solidify control. Wealth is power. Land-based empires also had a lot of cultural impacts that a lot of these empires were centers of artistic and intellectual achievement, but we're going to talk more about that. But just keep in mind that this is part of establishing legitimacy as the empire expands. They need to control the, the territory. Um, there's also cultural conflicts. For example, Roman Catholics and Protestants fought wars in Europe while Shia Muslims, the Safavids, and Sunni Muslims, Mughals, were often at war. But again, we're going to see more of this later on in Unit 3. So, 
Thesis practice time. How did land-based empires shape politics, economics, and culture of the world in this period? Overall, land-based empires played a significant role shaping the political, economic, and cultural landscape by controlling vast territories in innovative ways, facilitating global trade, and being centers of artistic and intellectual achievement. Dig into some of those to get a couple of details, and you're going to be all covered on this topic. So until 3.2, thanks for watching, and make sure you hit mrb.world.